The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is Wednesday, hump day in a rib. On a miserably rainy day. On a terrible, terrible day. And boy, we got a couple things to talk about here. But why don't you, you want to start off with little tiny Johnston, Rhode Island? Oh, yes. That's Johnston, that little, Rhode Island. That little tiny little... A little town in Rhode Island. Little uh, town, or yeah. Yesterday, they took out a bond, and they put it out to a vote. And the vote passed. They did what? Yeah, they put, they it, put out it out to the vote of the yeah, people? A vote of the oh, people. Oh, how dare they? How dare they? I know. I, I, I can't believe For it. a $215 million bond. $215. $215. $215. $215. i And guess what that money's for? Every school in Johnston. Every school in Johnston, exactly. A new high school, a new middle school, and a new elementary school, and a brand new early education center. Two hundred and fifteen million. We couldn't even put together a high school for two hundred and ninety million. Yeah. And we had to do a debt override, right. even though we didn't need it. And you know, herein so I wanted to start off with this because I got some uh, we got some chartered things to talk about shortly. But you see, this this I I love to see stuff like this on the news because it's an example, a real-time, real-life example of what we always talk about, about lack of ability to plan, lack of ability to control your spending, and having a government that doesn't represent the people, doesn't care about the people. Now, here's a tiny little town, and granted, they don't have as many schools as, as, as Fall River. Uh, the student population is, is small. The building's going to be a little smaller, but it's still a small town. But let's look at what they did. They planned this for a while. And I'll remind everybody that all those other schools that we built in Fall River for a long time, we didn't have to do a debt override because that was the, the Education 2000 that was basically the plan to build all these, these schools, like the Fonseca and you know, all these other things that they had, uh, was drafted in the 90s. And I know that because I was on the committee, because the Fall River Regional Task Force created the, basically the, the, the committee. So they planned, they planned, they looked at their money, they had everything planned. So the, so the taxpayers didn't get, didn't get hammered when we built all those other schools. But now, fast forward to today, in the last 10 or 15 years, when we have now adopted this total lack of spent, worried about what we do, we just do it, worry about pay. We're like the federal government, bond, override, do whatever you want to kill the taxpayer in the city of Fall River, which is a city with a lot of poor people because the average per capita income is $25,000 a year. When in fact, you know, the, the state average is 80 some thousand dollars a year. So uh, for, for a household, but and ours is 43, so it's double. But here again, Johnston, and there's not going to be a tax, in, tax increase. No, there isn't. The mayor of Johnston was on there saying there will not be. We are going to do everything. A and the other thing they did was, which was surprising, and CJ, you can, because you, I know you saw the same thing. The other thing that was fascinating, if you listen and pay attention, is that they are actually going to build them and actually kind of use some of the older schools. Right. Because guess what? Apparently they maintain their schools. Unlike us, who has a ma maintenance department and a, and a DCM that is 
bound by ordinance to maintain all buildings, yet every building in Fall River that we deal with that's a public building is falling apart. Whenever they, whenever they want your money and they're gonna, they're gonna give you extra taxes, they say it will cost more to fix this building than it will be to build a new building. And nobody asks why. They showed the pictures of the old Durfee. Did anybody ask how it got this bad? No. Screw the taxpayers, get a debt override, and remember, I'll go back to the beginning and I'm gonna turn it over to CJ. We were told we didn't need a debt override, but now we do. Again, a, the credit to their inability to control their spending. And I remember our mayor, when they were talking about this, said we may not even need the debt override. We're gonna have, we're paying off things and we're gonna have, we might have enough money where we don't even need it. Lie, lie, liar, liar, pants on fire. You never ever get money because as soon as you get money, whether it's the millions of dollars you saved in healthcare, the millions of dollars you skimmed from the retirement fund, you spend it and you just keep spending. So the people out there, you better get your butts out in the next election and clean house. Well, what I thought was very, very interesting is not only is it $215 million, but it's only going to cost the city 49% of that money. Yes. The state is going to cover 51% of that expense. And that is why there is no need for an exclusion. That is why there is no need for increased taxes, because they can fund that. And the reason they can fund it is because not only are you not building an entirely brand new school, but you're utilizing parts of the old school to make a new school, because the old school part is very good. Yeah. And that happens in hospitals. Yeah. They, they don't knock down a whole hospital to build a new one. Yeah, but, but there you go again, CJ. You're actually, you know, in these communities, actually maintain their buildings. Right. They have a maintenance, they have a maintenance department. They have a maintenance appropriations, and they actually utilize them to do something, not give out pay raises and, and siphon it off to other areas. This is the problem. This is planning. You see, you know the old, the, you know the old adage, the seven Ps, I think it's seven Ps, uh, poor planning promotes piss poor performance. No, that's six. Okay, the six Ps. Well, this is Fall River. That encapsulates Fall River. Never plan, just do it. Screw it, nobody cares. It's only the taxpayers, it's like the federal government. They just keep spending money. But the only difference is when they run out, they can, they can just print it. And that's why you got your inflation, people, because you can't print money and throw money out without creating more inflation. That's the irony of this. But Johnston, this little tiny enclave. Little piss ant town. Little tiny place. And they actually know how to deal with money. They actually oh. know how to worry about the taxpayer. Be still Where, my heart. You, you mean to tell me that Johnston, that little tiny place, they actually talked to their reps, state reps, and said, look, we need money. Well, let's, let's do this so we can. And they, they made sure that they had funding, everything in place. Yeah. You just look at Fall River. Damn the funding. Pull full speed ahead. Spend it. We'll go in front of the council and we'll say, if we don't do this, the building's going to collapse. Children are not going to learn like buildings teach kids. They're going to make all the doomsday prophecies to make you pay for their incompetency, their inefficiency, and, in, and their inability to, to control spending. Again, kudos. Let's have a big hand for the tiny little town of Johnston, Rhode Island, because they showed us how it's done. Now maybe we should send our politicians over there yeah. to learn how it's yeah. done. Maybe, hey. maybe we should get our, our, our city councils who say, what do you expect us to actually ask the people? Yeah, exactly. So maybe we should get them to, to look at a town that actually asked the people. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, 
you were talking about maintenance of the buildings. Fall River has two maintenance. Exactly. The school department has their own maintenance department. Right. And the city has a maintenance department, both of which don't seem to work. Yeah, and and, the thing and they both get money. You're right. And and the thing that always got me is that's another question never asked. You know, you know the old saying what they what they did in the military: "Don't ask, don't tell." Yeah. Nobody ever asked the question because I did bring it up on many years ago when we had a grievance about maintaining buildings. I brought the ordinance in and said, "Look, this says that all buildings are under the purview." Of, at the time it was Department of Public Works, mm -hmm. now it's DCM. The maintenance of buildings is by ordinance, DCM. So why do we have a maintenance department of schools? School buildings are in Fall River. That's They're right. part of Fall River. They're part of the Fall River budget. And the Fall so, River people pay for so it. So why, why don't we have a larger DCM and nobody, and no, see the big thing is though, remember, where there is a department there are jobs there are department heads and assistant department heads and all kinds of nice fat little paychecks to give to your friends right that's why you have it people and if this doesn't infuriate you now you're going to get mad you know i have i've been around long enough to know nobody cares until it affects their pocketbook and but guess what now when you go when you go and spend half your paycheck at the gas station because Brandon doesn't care. He wants you to go buy a Tesla. Let them eat cake and drive Teslas. So the, the, the fact is that they don't care. They don't care. And so that's what you got. You, you got a situation where nobody cares. There's a city ordinance. But then again, there's a charter that nobody pays attention to unless they want to. So, but. Yeah, you know, kudos to, to Johnston, Rhode Island, for, for showing that there are places that know how to do that it. That are not too far away either. You know, everybody everybody can't be like California. But we're trying in Fall River. We're trying to spend as much money as we can and get absolutely nothing done. The crime, crime capital of the world or something out here. Here's what's interesting. In Massachusetts, this is a commonwealth. Remember, a common. That's this, right. A lot of people don't realize they this don't is really, a commonwealth. This is not a state. This yeah. is the commonwealth. This is a commonwealth. So, a commonwealth means it's for the benefit of everyone. Yes, yes. For everyone. What is the word? Common. Common wealth. wealth. That's right. Yes. Common and wealth. we've created programs like the MSBA, the Mass School Building As uh, Administration Association, whatever they want to call themselves. And they oversee a percentage that they see fit to give you. Yeah. Not, yeah. not that what you can afford, not, but what they see fit to give you. And you got to be in the process for up to 10 years yeah. to get this money. Yeah, in spite of the fact that our Constitution, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, clearly states that everyone involved in our government are answerable and accountable to us. That's right. But they make the rules and we allow them to do it. Another question that's never asked, where are our politicians? Where are our state legislators? Why aren't they funding these things? They know they love to make up extra rules, extra extra conditions for everything. First, you got the, the, the obscenity that we call education reform, which has allowed them to create their own fiefdom and then they carved out that that wasn't enough. They carved out another one for regional schools. Right. We got a whole set of rules. They love to make rules which block the public from their constitutional right. And remember, everybody, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Constitution predates the United States Constitution. And what's very interesting, as I was saying, 10 years before you can get the money. Yep. 10 years before you get the percentage. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and they say to the city or the town or the regional district, now you come up with the rest of it. Yeah. And they don't work it out. See, in Rhode Island, the way it worked was they didn't have to go to an MSBA. They went to the state. They went to their state legislators. And they said to them, we need to build four new schools. 
We need to put them together. We need a new early education center. We need a new a large elementary school. They took four elementary schools and put them together, which I personally don't believe in, but this is what they've done. Uh, and they wanted to uh, mo renovate and modify their middle school and their high schools. They said it's going to cost us $215 million. The state legislature said, I'll take it to the state legislature and then we'll see. They took it there and they came back and said, we can give you 51%. Boom, boom, done. Well, ima imagine that they went to the state representative or the state legislator, and they said, this is what we need. And they, they worked, and they brought it to the, the full body, and they came back and said 51%. Yeah, but let's look at our state representatives and our state bureaucrats, our, our monarchs, our kings, queens, dukes, and duchesses. See, they didn't do that. What did they do? Didn't we have an over a billion dollars in surplus once? Yes. Did they say, well, let's spend that on some schools. Let's finance something. Let's do it. The, the Rhode Island legislature will give you 51%, blah, blah. No, they didn't do that. They blew it. Right. There's another question. What happened to the money? Came to other states, have, have, have deferred their gas tax temporarily to Not help the people. Not Massachusetts. Charge led by our own senator Roderick we can't do it we can't do it our budget is so tight that what the revenue lost will destroy our bond rating even though we had a billion dollars in surplus just a little while ago you see that's that's what really upsets me about these people they think everybody is stupid that they have no memories Nobody knows what's going on. Or as a city council president once told me, you don't understand. The budget is very complex. And I said, no, it isn't complex. It's just a bunch of numbers that you add, subtract. You don't even divide. You just add and subtract. I said, budget's pretty simple. If something costs a dollar and I got 50 cents, I can't buy it. This is how much money I have. That's what a budget is. It's not that complicated, and I proved it. And they averted all the layoffs that they had in it because they couldn't find the money, and even the auditor and the, and the treasurer said, whoops, yeah, we got $6.5 million missing in the budget. They couldn't even add. And the thing was on the front page of the Herald News, and they couldn't add it. So this is the con they run. You let them be stupid because... They assume, and unfortunately, in that case, they're correct, that people are either stupid or they just don't care. It's time to start caring. People will care in the next election because now people are going broke. You're spending half your paycheck on a gas, gas and your, rep, your senator will not push For a gas tax holiday, your city council will not push your state legislators for that. Nobody cares, but they'll come by and they'll march in a parade. They'll give out little masks and they give fuzzy little animals to kids. And, and socks. And socks, yes, socks. They'll give you anything but the time pie, of day. Pie meetings. Yeah. They'll give you anything. They'll give you everything you want to divert you while they're yep. picking your pocket. So, yep. I mean, I, I've watched Paul Schmidt go from restaurant to restaurant. Yep. He's like a walking bull billboard. Oh, I've been to a blah, blah, blah restaurant today. This is a great place. You know, shop local, buy local. Uh, Alan Sylvia, handing out socks, handing out flags, going to every restaurant, having pictures taken. He's the king of, of, of selfies, you know it's what great. I mean? Uh, yeah. And, and he's putting all those, I know it's an election year. I know it's an election year, okay? But how about doing your job? No, you're 100% right, CJ, but that's the problem. They get away with it. You see, the, the people do not hold them. You see, the, even though our Constitution says they are accountable, it's up to us to hold them accountable. What they should say is, thanks, I don't want the socks. 
I want you to go up to the hill and fight for money for Fall River right. to spend on our schools. Well, why don't you help us build? Why don't you give us more than 51%? Why That's don't you right. give us 75% right. with all the money you blow? Mm -hmm. How much money is it going to cost for us to give licenses to illegals, which you voted for, by the way, our entire delegation? Our entire delegation. Our entire delegation. But no. They're not going to go up there and fight. That's what they do. They give you things. They they buy you with, like we always say on a local level, a Charmaine sandwich. Yeah. They buy your vote with a Charmaine sandwich. You don't care. You complain about your taxes. You complain about your water bills. You complain about how tough it is. We're complaining about inflation. But nobody holds these clowns accountable for fixing it. They couldn't give you a tax, a gas break. Rhode Island's talking about it. We've had states. Connecticut's done it. Conne New Hampshire's done Conne it. New Hampshire's done it. Everybody's giving their people a break except Massachusetts. So bend over and get the Vaseline because here it comes. <laughs> That's if they're nice. Yeah, <laughs> if they're nice. But, you know, it, it, it's crazy, and it gets us to another political thing. I think we've, we've, we've given Johnson. we got to go to Johnson and have lunch, uh, Johnston and go to, and have lunch Sunday and, and frequent one of their sto uh, restaurants because yeah. say congratulations you guys did it right we can meet with that we can but meet while with we're talking years. about ignoring laws and nobody cares i heard uh-oh i heard that the mayor our illustrious ma uh, mayor in hiding like we have a president in hiding 90 percent of the time nobody sees him unless he's wandering around a skateboard park or uh, you know, going to a movie or handing out masks or something like that. We don't see anything done for anybody but the apparently, but the developers and his lawyer friends, and his banker friends, and his banker friends, and all his rich friends. We'll just yeah. make it ubiquitous. Rich people, rich because this is a believe me, this is not political. This is class war. It has been. They try to make you think it's about po it's about political parties. It's not. It's rich against poor, and as as our boy, as I as our boy said, you make under three hundred thousand, take a bus, eat lentils, and let your dog die. Don't give it uh, chemotherapy. Bloomberg, our, our billionaire guy, and then when they asked him why he has his own, he's against uh, against police, defund the police, uh, get get rid of all the guns except the the the, the private police force that he has, and his answer was. Well, I'm rich and important. And he actually said that. Mm -hmm. So there's two things he said that shows their total disregard for people. And we can go back 200 years. I read it uh, from the Labor's Untold Story. But the mayor supposedly is talking about, and he's, he's given it the old mantra. How many times have we heard this, CJ? We spoke about it when he created this disaster of a charter. You know, we got to go to a four-year term. And what are we on the verge of? He's going to appoint people to deal with the charter. Correct. We got to go to four years because get ready. Here's what he's going to say because they say it all the time. You can't do anything in two years. As soon as you get in office, you're running for, you're running for office again. Well, he's right. But he's wrong about you can't do anything. What you get with a four-year term, people, and I'm saying it here, I'm going to say it to the council, I'm going to fight it tooth and nail as we did when they talked about it when they created this charter, and this charter has to be scrapped, not tweaked, scrapped, because this charter gave politicians like the mayor all the power to continue to get more power. Now he's going to take the people... And, r and try to ram a four-year term down their throat. And you know what a four-year term results in? More power for them. Because think about what happens in four years. You get elected, then you got three years to run all the political times you want, get your bank roll to be huge. Now some guy who doesn't have that luxury tries to run against you, and you can outspend him 100 to 1. It's not about getting anything done, because let me tell you something. Two-year terms are fine. You know why? If you can't run a city 
and campaign on your record, you also can't chew gum and read the paper at the same time. That is a crock. It shows that you're a politician first, not a mayor. Explain to me how Carlton Rivera stayed in for 12 years. Explain to me why, why Eddie Lambert stayed in for a decade or more. We've had mayors that stayed in. Now we got mayors that go out like a revolving door. That's what you're afraid of. We had a recall. We got rid of one in a year. Problem is that you have to perform. Nobody's asking you to change the city in two years. What a two-year term does is live up to our Constitution. It says you should be answerable to us at all times. The more frequently you, you are answerable, uh, answerable to us, the more we're living by our Constitution. If I had my way, we'd have an election every year. There's nothing to prevent a mayor to say, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, this is my plan, and this is what we're doing. We're in the initial phases. And then if he promises it and doesn't do it, boot him. You're going to give him three more years to get money and get more entrenched in office and make more deals with developers so they can support him? That's stupid. That's absolutely stupid. Four-year terms are for politicians, not for the people, because the people deserve to boot them. And remember something. I'm going to tell you the promises they made. Every mayor. That's why they need a four-year term. They don't, Paul. They need a 30-year term. 40-year term. How many mayors said they were gonna they were gonna they were gonna revitalize the downtown district? Is it revitalized? No. How many people are gonna develop the waterfront? For the last 30 years they've been developing the waterfront. All those mayors just didn't have enough time, did they, Paul? Too bad. Yeah, just ran out of time. 30, 40 years later, nothing gets done. That's the problem. So here we go again. We're taking that, that disastrous charter and we're going to use it to get more power. It's a power grab. And, he, and I can guarantee you that he will not appoint, because he has to appoint somebody from the previous one, he will not appoint the only charter commissioner that deserves to be appointed, who is Danny Robillard, who opposed virtually everything in his charter, was the only one on that, on that commission to vote against the charter and file a minority report on it. And we know that charter is a disaster, and not one of those other people who walked in lockstep to create this, this mess should be appointed to look at that charter again. The only person deserving of the appointment from the old Charter Commission is Dan Robillard, the only individual who said from the get-go that it was a mess. Yeah, I mean, he, he saw it, uh, and, and we saw it. Yeah. How many times did we yeah. tell them, okay? And they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. And what happened with that Charter Commission was this. Mike Mioza dictated, Chris Bartley agreed, and then the rest of them fell lockstep. Except for Danny. Danny was, you know, a, a thorn in their side. Oh, my God, you can't do that. And he was right. Yeah. And we were right. Yeah. So when we're right, we love to say it because everyone says we're, we're nothing but complainers. But we may be complainers, but we're right. But I want to hear what happens in three months. You know what happens in three months? The debt exclusion comes on the bills. That's right. The debt exclusion comes on the bills. And uh -huh. then... Then we'll hear from the people screaming, I don't have the money to pay my tax bill. That's right. Well, don't worry. If you're looking for Paul, he'll be at the skate park. <laughs> Riding the skateboard with the rest of the kids. That's right. Because, <laughs> I mean, the only time I've seen him is when he's giving awards to kids or yeah. doing something for the kids. And, you know, you're not the mayor for the children. You're the, the mayor for the parents. The phantom mayor. Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to thank you all for watching. It's great to be invited into your home every day. And once again, stay safe, stay angry, and hold your politicians accountable. Have a great day. See you on Friday. And we're the views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons of Bristol Community.